blend that together with the textbook. The textbook gives you the direct content, which we have elaborated on to create a lecture for you. And then the discussion currently is to throw light on it and then you can in real time ask your pertinent questions that you may have. Okay, so that is how it goes. Then you don't have any excuse whatsoever that oh, I didn't understand this one. Or the lecture recording, it was just a recording. So you can ask the recorder a question and all that. That's why we are here. Normally, this session should be, so when you listen to the lecture, what questions do you have? Then we just start talking about that. Not that the person comes to tell you again what someone has taken pains to put together for you again. Then what's the point? You are an university student. So your posture must be right. Mm. On my screen now, I have put something there. Let's read. I say, I say, question. Then I'll mute and ask. If not, then you can read what is on the screen for me quickly. I'll walk you through. I say, Kumi. Evans. Evans, go ahead with your question. If it's a question. Oh, it was not a question. Okay, you so were asking to uh -huh, what, what you heard in the lecture. Is mm -hmm. that it? Okay. You can quickly tell us that, then we start reading, okay? Okay. Please, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Right. So, in the unit nine, I learned something yeah. different. Okay. So, what I learned from unit nine was that. We lost you, Rakumi. Rakumi, we lost you. I think we may be having a network challenge. So let's 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 read. Abna Sewa, can you read for us? Abna Sewa, Ayebini. Hello. Yes, Ose, it's better now. Are you able to speak now? Okay. So the unit. Now was mostly on um, casual arguments. Causa, which, from yeah, the word causa. Sorry, okay. sorry, causa yeah, argument. That's fine, okay. go on. It depends on the um, the cause and the um, effects of hypothesis. Very good. Um, so um, in the unit nine, we are going to um, know the meaning of the cause. Yeah. And also to eliminate the relative of the causes Mm -hmm. And also, we depend. We will also enlighten a little on the causal fallacies that we have in the uh, unit nine. So, I um, in the unit nine, we also know that for every effect, it's possible to identify multiple causes. So, in this unit nine, there are a lot of sentences that will um, portray or display uh, the causes and the fallacies that we are going to identify in such sentences. So that is what I um, had. You can pick from the lecture. Very good. I think it's a good effort. So at least you know that there are fallacies that are described as causal fallacies. And that's very good. Then you know that there are different meanings that you can associate with the word cause. In other words, different connotations of the word cause. That's also very good. Then you know that there, there is a way of reasoning and offering justification for effect, for things that happen causal justification of course which can be described as inductive they don't establish with certainty but they offer justification they give you some reason why good reason why you should accept or reject so just these three can set us off very well that's a good attempt thank you very much evan abna sewa please read for us now <clears throat> Place to seek a co the cause or causes of things. Oh, until we can hear you. Check your microphone. It is common Debbie. place. Debbie, and I'm Abna. You're not going to You're far away. Check it. Can I you check it? Let me let me let someone read. Okay. Then you check your mic. You can always read again. Maybe you have put an earphone or headpiece or something. Then you you check it. Yeah. Let let Dennis Dennis Mensa please read for us. If you have a very good background, then it's new day mentor. Fine, I can even out. You need nine. Good. Causal reasoning. Uh -huh. Cause and effect based. 
it is commonplace to seek the cause or causes of things. That is COVID-19, climate change, flooding, destroyed relationship, decline in spirituality, soul friendships, and etc. Again, causal, not casual. Again, causal, not casual arguments are also inductive. A matter of probability, a matter of probability, not proof or certainty. Very good. That was well read. Let's explain. We always try, we here referring to human beings in our reasoning, in our engagement, when we talk to each other, when we, we make a case for or against, we argue sometimes from what? Cause and effect ground. We argue and trying to try to explain what could have caused something, what, what we can say caused, brought about something, like COVID-19, like climate change like flooding, a Christ is getting wet now because of the rain. What is causing the flooding in Accra? People will have all excuses and people will have all the reasons causally for which, we, for, for which reason there is what? Flooding. Some will say people are building at wrong places. Some will say the, uh, uh, whatever, the authorities are granting permits without observing or doing any good groundwork. Okay, what is the cause for destroyed relationship? Only you, anytime you enter into a relationship, the guy will leave you or the lady will, will dump you. Only you, what could be the cause? Some can even trace it all the way to the, the witches and wizards in their hometown. I won't say no to that, but what is the cause of the effect we are having? Why are people not pe 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 uh, doing well, for example? Why are others doing very well? There is always the need to analyze, reason, try to find out the justification, try to offer a causal justification for things. And, and we are saying that we are not saying casual. So my friend that engaged us earlier, you see that I, co I quickly corrected, you look at the spelling well so that you don't get it wrong. Now, causal arguments, like I told you in unit seven, I told you that they are also inductive arguments. It means that no matter how good the premises you are offering are, it will not be enough to claim that you have proven with certainty a causal relation between the premises and the conclusion. That one is very important for you to make a note of. Thank you very much, Dennis. Now take uh, Joshua Koto. Josh, read what you see for us. Remember what your friend said earlier. He said he saw different meanings of the word cause, different connotations. I, you see that I show you over the unit nine, activity 1.1 and activities 1.2. We'll give you some more, we'll throw some more light on what we are discussing. If you have your test, let it by, by you, referencing it a lot. Go on, sir. Okay. Uh, different co connotations, that is meanings of words cause. Cause as proximate condition that is nearest to the effect. It's as simple as that. So let me, I would want to explain what you say so that it will help for um, for people to keep it. Okay, so look at the word proximate, approximately. When we say 2.69 and we are to approximate to the nearest whole number, it means bring it to the whole number that is closest. So 2.6 will become 3. You see, but if I said 2.4, then it will, be, it will still be 2. You know, so approximation means bringing it to what is nearest. So if you hear approximate cause, if we say the cause of something, we may be thinking of cause as what? The proximity, what was nearest to the effect. So for example, as soon as, let, let's say that someone slips on the staircase, there was water poured there, the cleaner cleaned the place, and then the water because the water is there. When the sister was passing, she slipped on that water and falls off. What caused the slipping, uh, excuse me, the falling? We will say, oh, she slipped. The slip will be the approximate, the proximate condition that led to the, the falling, okay? But it could be that someone poured the water and the person poured the water because he or she was in a hurry to go and write an exam 
which, uh, which had a change. So the exam was originally 12 o'clock. Then the lecturer says, no, 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 now you will do it at 11. So this gentleman having his pure water in hand had to run out to make the time. And when he was running, he poured a little, a little water and didn't have time to wipe it. I'm showing you the chain, of course. Hmm? He didn't have time to clean the water. And so now this other sister coming with her high heel shoe, she could also have worn a flat heeled shoe, but she, de she decided to wear high heel. And so she, perhaps she slipped and fell. Now, what would be the approximate? We say is the slipping that caused it. But when we go to the next one, look on the screen now, your friend will read it, agent. Perhaps when we ask who is the agent, or when we say what caused it, and in our minds, we have their cause as agent, the agent, the person or entity with the motivation or intention to bring about an effect. Mm -hmm. Then in the same scenario, we will not talk about the hue or the slipping because the slip is not an agent. We may say that the university caused it or the lecture caused the falling. Let's take one answer time, yeah. You see that. If the lecture didn't change the time, this wouldn't have happened. So here, agent as a cause, when we say what cause, we could have proximity in mind to, as defining cause. At other time, when we say what causes, we may have in mind what? The agency, the human being or the institution. In other words, an entity that is able to make a decision, intention and what motivation. That's the second meaning of the word cause. So when we say what cause, it's not always the necessary condition. It's not always the sufficient condition, not always the probabilistic condition, no. We can be thinking of proximity, proximate condition or agency. The third one on the screen is what necessary condition. When we say cause, we could be meaning that antecedent condition that must be there, must, emphasis, must, must be present if the effect can occur at all. When I teach it, I normally use football. I say for you to say you have scored a goal, it is necessary that the ball hits the net of your opponent. The ball must enter your opponent's net for it to constitute a goal. You can say you have a goal, you, you have scored a goal, when all you are doing is dribbling. You are dribbling in the middle there, people are falling down, you are doing dangbeshi and all that, and people are giving you fun. It doesn't score a goal. Now go, now my people. What is necessary? What must be? be present for us to say we have scored is what? The ball yeah, must hit the net. In other words, the ball must enter the opponent's net. That's a necessary condition to, uh, to what? Scoring in football, okay? So proximity, the nearest cause that might have brought about a goal, maybe that uh, uh, what the, the, the goalkeeper slipped and fell, so the ball passed by him. That might be the nearest. So it might be the proximate cause. But the agent may be Messi or, or, or Ciro who played the shot and out of fear of Messi's shot, mm. he himself slips and falls down, for example. Okay? So the agent will be the one who played the ball. And then the necessary condition for that goal that was scored, what is the condition that necessarily brought about the goal? That the ball hit the net, the back of the net. It hit it. Because all those things could have happened and yet the ball will hit the bar and go back in. Then we wouldn't have scored. So what was necessary is that the ball entered the net. Necessary. It must be present for the effect to okay. Without it, the effect can't okay. That's a necessary condition. Sufficient condition, these two are very technical, so take note. Sufficiency means if that effect, uh, excuse me, if that condition is present, the effect will happen. Look at the language. If that condition is present, the effect will happen. But it is not a necessary condition. Means that what? Other conditions can bring about that effect. As for the necessary condition, no. That one must be there before the effect will come. A sufficient condition is just that which, if present, will bring about the effect. Yet, the effect can still come without it. Something else can bring about that same effect. So if we have a condition which is not a necessary one, it means that its presence is sufficient to bring about the effect, yet without it, the effect can nonetheless happen through another channel. 
That is the difference between necessary condition and sufficient condition. You should be able to distinguish the two, even if you haven't done too much philosophy or logic. This is basic critical thinking. If I have I eat too much salt, maybe that's what doctors tell that you could uh, 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 generate a high blood pressure or uh, what's the expression? You can increase. You can have a heart attack. Too much salt, consistent. Okay. However, it is not the only antecedent condition that can lead to that heart attack. See, so if you had a bad news and it is not delivered well, it could also create a heart attack. You could get a, I don't know if they call it heart attack or there, there will be a cardiac arrest immediately. So the conditions that lead to cardiac arrest need not necessarily be what hearing bad news or hearing uh, eating too much salt and the like. They are all sufficient for the effect, not necessary for the effect. All right, so so far we've worded the four of them. Then the, the individually necessary, jointly sufficient is each of those antecedent conditions together will bring about the effect. They are each needed and they are needed together. I, I, I hope that that is, uh -huh. so each is necessary. And when they come together, they, they are sufficient. They become enough to bring about the effect, that's the point. Look at the example on photosynthesis. The effect is photosynthesis. What is the cause of photosynthesis? You need sunlight, water, blah, 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 chlorophyll, what have you. All of them together become sufficient for the effect. Individually, they are necessary. Collectively, they are sufficient. And then probabilistic cause, look at the name. What probably led to the slap? The girl has chopped some bad slap from the brother <laughs> that morning. And you are there, you're an observer. And you are probably, this guy didn't eat this morning. And probably the lady insulted the guy. You are trying to hazard what could possibly, probably hmm, have led to the cause. So it is not proximity. It is not agency. You are trying to hazard guess. Inform guests, of course, find out what, what could probably have led to the effect. Now you see that there can be overlaps. Like always, we tell you when we do critical thinking, we don't have white scenario versus black scenario all the time. Sometimes there are gray areas, and that's why it is important to know why you see what you see. Why? Not that you are just parroting something because you heard it said, but you are able to explain why. In your exam questions, the short, short answers came that way. Why would you say that this is true? Explain why this, why this? Because it is in the explanation that sometimes we get what you intended. Maybe what you said is wrong, but your explanation can end your mind. Not so far, uh, not so far as we are dealing with empirical evidence, no effects can lay claim to only one single cause. You cannot say it is only one single cause that led to the effect. If we are dealing with an empirical issue, <laughs> even the temperature in Ghana, or Africa can account for why people get angry, even the temperature. But it might not be included in the whole discussion that a black, uh, friend, uh, not black, but uh, an African man will be the white to get. That is if it did happen at all. There might be so many antecedents, maybe even how the sister does a makeup, uh, the, the man, a detail. You see, so you, you can't locate just a single, this is the point we are making, a single supposed course and say that it is this one, that course. That doesn't work. You can just associate it with it, but you know that there will be a collection of several other factors, how she was eating, she wasn't sleeping, she wasn't learning right, and so on. All will come together. Maybe she was even in that part time of the month. That's why perhaps she didn't perform well. Okay, not that. As soon as someone performed excellently, oh, it's because she has been learning. Maybe she, she was lucky that morning. <laughs> it could be luck. It could be bet. It could be so many things. That's the point. So we don't want you to go thinking that you have established anything with certainty when it comes to causal reason. Any questions? I pause. If it's not a question, then people, I see five hands. I suspect that they want to read. So, but if yours is a question, then please unmute and ask. It's Benjamin, Pepra, Claudia. Oh, is that three hands now? 
Abina Ajib Ajib hey. Abina Ayebini Maha. Okay, so if it's reading, then let's take if it's a question, yeah, then you can go ahead. Let me shut up. Hello, madam. Benjamin, go ahead. Yeah, like now I want to ask um under like um sentence fragment. Um yeah. All the best. If you say all the best, is it um sentence fragment or I'm not that. Who did we hear that the chats were? Yeah, I'd say sentence fragment. We are going yeah. to be ex you, you people are going to be examined on unit six, seven, nine, and ten for your final exam to to end yeah. fifty. Who did fifty? <laughs> sentence fragment in Kahu. Why? Yeah. So man, I'm like. I'm 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 Let's do you cause that reason. When we finish, we can do that, Miss Lenos. Respectfully, okay. okay. It will help you. Mm. Right now, we are 270 subjects. We are trying mm. to grasp content to help us weather the storm ahead. Okay. Mm. When we finish, and it is being recorded. So when we finish, I could catch the recording, then all the other matter. Or you can even send me an email or whatever directly. Okay. Or it's mm. it's just for your own curiosity. You want to make sure that you're okay. So uh -huh. But right now we shouldn't lose focus. Claudia, is just a question? If Claudia, if yours is not a question, or they are not it, then you can read what is on the screen now. Hello, mom, I have a question. Okay, so no, hold on, Claudia. Question. The other one is also a question. Uh, is it? Is it? Um, who? Who is that? Is it Yao? Yao Clement. Yes. 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 Okay, let's take your Clement first. Yeah, um, Madam, you did make a scenario. You said um, that uh, with the agent cost. I want to ask a question now. Um, you said um, the, uh, that a student was supposed to go and sit for an exam, and he slept. Ask the question. Now, uh, I remember what I said. So ask the question. Yeah. yeah so oh, I wanted to know. Um, shouldn't the agent be the student because a he poor the water? The agency should. Um, you said the agency shouldn't be who? The student. Why is that? Why is it that? By the student that has fallen down. Yes. Yes. I'm so asking. So when we ask what caused, I'm coming. So when we ask what caused his falling down, you say he caused his falling down. Because he poured the water. Oh, oh I, I want to an answer before the because. You want to suggest that he caused it? I want to know your mind, then I can react. Oh, uh -huh. So are you yes, suggesting yes. that? Oh, look, I think that he caused his own fall. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes that's also a possibility. Don't don't drag it. That's also a possibility. Like the way some people tell people that the woman who died prior, some people say she killed herself because she should have left. And you can't begrudge anyone who says that. That's what they think. I, I hope you get it. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, so don't, okay. we shouldn't drag it. There isn't anything to drag. Someone can do the agency as it is some demons who are jealous of her. Maybe she went to do a crusade and the way she was powerfully pulling their things down, then they conspired and it will still be agency. So we, we, we don't have to even necessarily link it to a specific thing. I was trying to show you that when we say agent, then there's purposiveness, okay. then there's motivation, there's intention, and it can be the okay. shoe. Because shoes don't have intentionality, supposedly. Uh -huh. Okay, so mm -hmm. so there is no issue at all. Wait, let's take okay. um. That is a very good question. Let's take someone else. If, if it's a question, I, I think there were two other questions. Mm, I see agents. Is it Benjamin? Madam. Yeah. Is it Benjamin calling me uh, now? Benjamin, yeah, yeah, madam. Go ahead, sir. Uh, don't please. say yeah. The, the, Listen, friends, I'm telling everyone. I I I hear that a lot with freshers when they come in. It's very rude, though. So, not picking on Benjamin, but I want to use it to tell them: don't be addressing your superiors with "yeah, yeah, yeah." No, it's very rude. Okay, go ahead, Benjamin. Say yes, please, or yes, madam, yes. or yes. yes Even if you say yes, I know, I know, but yeah, yeah, I'm not your equal. I was in level 100 20 years ago. Go ahead, sir. Yes, madam. Mm. I want to ask that the probabilistic or the likelihood. Can you like? Yeah. Link it to like and um, like normative laws. Uh -huh. Since like it, I can, yeah, I get your, I get your question. 
Yeah. Let, let me try and help yeah. out. So when we do probabilistic laws, uh, excuse me, normative yeah. laws, we'll be dealing with the, the concept of law, regularity. Okay, we are talking about uh, the nature of the state base capturing a supposed regularity. That is why we we'll call it normative or empirical when it is just describing that regularity. Here, here we are looking at accounting for what caused it. When we are trying to give a supposed uh, cause, we are trying to say what brought it about. Not describing or prescribing how the thing is happening, but we are trying to tell who brought it about, what brought it about. Cause means it, it, it generated it. Mm -hmm. What brought it about? What gave it? What gave birth to it? What brought it about? Hmm. So when we are doing probabilistic cause, we are saying that what probably brought that effect about? Not not that we are describing the law or prescribing a law. Well, uh -huh, that's the difference. So one is a question of law-like or uh, normative laws. But here we are not interested in the nature of the statement. We are interested in what brought about that supposed effect? Was it probably that thing or something else brought it about? You. Thank you, uh, Benjamin. Then any other person? Hello, Mom. Yes, Hello, is it Benjamin, Benjamin again? No. Is no, it Benjamin please. again? No, Let's no, take please. Lydia's question. No, no, no. Let me take Lydia's question. I'll take the other gentleman later. Dr. Mom, yeah. please. Yes, please. Yes, the sufficient condition a little more. I the what? So Sufficiency. The sufficient Sufficiency condition. means the condition that if it is present will bring about the effect. Yet, even if it is not present, the effect can still come from another source. You see? So its presence is only sufficient for the effect. It is not a necessary condition. It is sufficient, and I'm saying sufficient means because it is there, the effect will come. It will bring about the effect. But we shouldn't think that as soon as we see the effect, we should assume that that condition has come. Not necessarily. Something else could have brought about that effect. That's why I used, let's use the heart attack as an effect. Whose sufficient, uh, sufficient condition, in other words, whose sufficient cause is what? like eating so much salt. I wish we had a medical person to give us concrete example. But let's say that if you took in so much salt, it is sufficient to give you heart attack. That is if you took it all the time, too much salt all the time. It could give you blood pressure, BP, for example. Then we'll say taking in so much salt is a sufficient condition for having blood pressure. However, when we say it is sufficient, it only means that some other condition could bring about blood pressure. It is not only taking in so much so. So taking in so much so is only one of the reasons or one of the antecedent conditions that leads to uh, blood pressure. So we'll say it is sufficient for blood pressure. But telling people bad news can also give them pressure immediately. That is if you don't manage it well. You go, the person is standing in front of the fridge, drinking water, then you go and say, hey, if it, hey, you are going to kill the other person there by the fridge. And she went out straight and closed it, so she doesn't smell. She will be, <laughs> you don't do that. So eating too much salt, yes, can lead to that effect of that pressure. But you also want to be careful not to go telling people bad news, or even sometimes good news without announcing it today, you have to manage it. People do have a fun. The way the news comes to pass through the head. And she'll start, you see how people behave when we score a goal, Ghana, especially if it is not against Comoros, that's uh, <laughs> like Nigeria, sir. See how people behave, excitement. Okay, my sister, so that's the, the thing about sufficiency. I don't know if it is better now. Yes, please. All right. Read the textbook eh, and go through the slides. Then read Dr. Anis, eh, engage Dr. Anis lecture recording. They should all come together to give you some, some welcome. All right, let's read, let's read. Well, go ahead. Hello, Hello ma'am. As I'm whining, go ahead. Um, ma'am, please, for the sufficient condition. Yeah. Um, with, the, with the example you gave, you said that if 
um, if you take in too much salt, maybe you can get BP. And yeah. other other results can other patients can let you get BP. So yeah. if the other results are they are they happening based on they is taking in too much salt salt or they are no 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 they it have nothing to do with the taking in of salt. That's another antecedent condition that can lead to the same effect. That's why it's sufficient. Okay, okay. Like so so just to add to that. So if it rains, the ground will get wet. And if I say the ground is wet because it rains. I have given you a sufficient condition for the ground being what? wet. Because I could also pour water and the ground will be wet. And the brothers, apologies, who don't have, who are not very cultured, can stand at a public place and do, you know what I'm talking about, and the, and the place will be wet. So the urinating indiscriminately and pouring of water and rainwater are all sufficient see, there are sufficient conditions that can lead to the ground being wet it's not a necessary condition all right i think yes, that is clear thank now. you welcome now let madam. me take a uh, madam yes bra hey i'm going to maybe have you let's go uh, yes oh. as you could me yeah, I just have one question. Uh, I don't like yell. I said I'm not your girlfriend. Yes. Go on, sir. Um, an example. Um, the gunshot victim died because he was shot by a jealous husband. Yeah. Um, it's in the test. Yeah. yeah. Previously, um, a guy said that the agent can be the victim. Let me say it that yeah. way. Yeah. And so, if there's a question like this and yeah. They said, identify the agent in the sentence, and yeah. you and you, we then already you that the agent, answers given to you. Yeah, and what if they bring the two up? Are Which you insulting I, the people who said questions? Oh, and I'm not insulting the people. Maybe it can happen. Oh, no, no, you, you can't say that. Oh, say, dog, please. What about if they access two plus three is equal to? Then the answer is they put five. Then they also put square root of twenty-five. Then if, if they put that, then the third question will be. All of the above. You have to open your eyes and see. You see that? Because the people asking you the question, they they end their place. They are not who <laughs> they are because we are accessible, so you don't know. They've end their place. The University of Ghana and Aidin Wagro. University of Ghana, when they say this person is a lecturer, an examiner of a course, they know that the quality they have there. Mm, some of your lecturers that are teaching are teaching the law school. They are teaching at the law school, teaching lawyers. But because they haven't come to tell, some are teaching medical doctors, but they are on the team, unassuming, very calm and cool. All you hear them is modus ponens, modus ponens. So big boss, be, I'm just giving you an assurance that the people asking you the questions, they won't give you an ambiguous question when they are already teaching you ambiguity. If you see something that looks like it's the same, A is the same as B, then check the C or the D. There might be all of the above them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so be at peace. You do fine. All right, I think we should continue. Right. So this is a JS Mills's four methods. Don't don't lose your question though. When we finish, we can we can save the discussion on causal reasoning proper and all your very important questions that you have. Then we can do the inter interactions further. I don't have a problem with that. And let me take uh, Chris Cyrus to read for us. Chris, please go ahead. Okay. To improve our explanation of the possible causes. Of Will you kindly read the title? Very important. Causes. All right. Yes, yes. Mills. Four methods of causal reasoning. Yes. Yeah, so J.S. Mills is four methods of causal reasoning. J.S. Mills is a philosopher. He's a thinker. His name is, is, is fully John Stuart Mill. John Stuart Mill. As written extensively. Oh, one I recommend you. Okay. Cyrus, I'm muting all it, so you can unmute now. Someone is running a commentary there. Yes, Mills's four methods of causal reason. That is John Stuart Mills's four methods of causal reason. He did some ethics, but he also did some philosophy of science. And he's giving us some inductive ways of explaining the possible causes of things. Remember, it is inductive. So he hasn't said that if you go through these methods that he's advocating for or proposing, then you will arrive at what certainly caused something. No, not what certainly caused it. 
certainty? No, not with inductive reason. They are like sampling. They are like enumerative induction. They are like what? Argument based on analogy. You can't have any certainty attached to them. So this is J.S. Mills's four methods of causal reasoning, not casual reasoning. Open your eyes <laughs> before you go and say the answers are the same. Yesterday, one of your colleagues, not from uh, our group here, our group here, but also a student of the course, sent an email. You can see that the person was really distressed. I think she got eight for the objective. But she didn't know that it's eight over 20 until we finished with the short, short answer. So she was, she said, I, I got eight over 30. And I don't understand. She didn't speak, but I could tell from the way she's written. I don't understand why I should get eight. I mean, the way I learned and the way I really answered the question, I kept quiet. I, I made them go on and I responded to them, my, my lady. <laughs> All what you have said are uh, inductively supporting your conclusion. It is possible that everything you said is true and yet the conclusion you are drawing is false. He said, no, 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 but how can that be? Look at the evidence. I said, hey, you need to know you are 80 because I'm waiting. <laughs> you are not applying the critical thinking to your own analysis. It could be true that you didn't sleep. It could be true that you read. It could be true that you saw all the questions. And yet, the conclusion that, therefore, I must get 20 over 20 is false. It doesn't follow necessarily. It is possible. So I, because of that, I went to her, her page, and then I went to each one of them and typed her responses to each of the questions, because I can't give you all, all the questions and the answers. If I do that, it's not fair. Some are still writing at distance education. Apart from that, when we, offer, when we finish, or we can release for everyone. But for now, we are still grading. So I can't show you your questions and your answers, all of it like that. But I showed her, <laughs> it's funny, I showed her some of the things that she did. In other words, the, the ones she chose. Then she said, yes, yes, I chose this one. I remember I chose it. I said, you see, say A declarative, not B a factual, not C a assertion. How can you choose declarative and leave the other two? When we are saying which of the following best describes the given option? Declarative is correct. Factual is also correct. And so is assertion. They are all describing that statement there. Today is Friday, that is, for example. I don't remember what they said. He said, well, yes, 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 yes. Then I say, if an argument, I say, an argument is a statement that supports its conclusion with evidence. You say true to this. It's an argument, a statement. Argument is a statement. It is the thing that, I, that's why when I, we started the first part of our discussion, I was, a, I was talking like a, a big sister to the younger one. I said, look, be interested in what detail when they say send the email to this send it there don't think you know better than the one who wrote it because there's a reason i said an argument is a statement that that's so and so and so, and so. as soon as you see an argument is a statement then i'm asking you true or false it can never be true argument and an argument is not a statement an argument is a collection of statements a set of them at least there should be two one premise the other conclusion you can't have an argument being a statement. And people speak that way. When we are talking about our correct, don't say it's a statement. An argument is not a statement. So I'm just showing you how people can just put all everything together and feel that, oh, I have it covered. Oh, I have it covered. Oh, I, oh eh, 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 I've been, uh, we are done. Oh, the course, you have it. Critical thinking? No, sir. And did you, but people got 20 over 10. There were 19 over 20 and 17 over 20. And I went to mark the short, short answer. I'm getting them. I look, it, it looks good so far. So patience and then diligence and not allegorism. And you, you will do fine. All right. So our brother, my, my big boss, J.S. Mills is saying that you are able to explain what possibly causes. I could say all what I've said and then conclude by saying with certainty. And people who don't like details, as soon as they see John Stuart Mills' four methods of causal reasoning, help us to explain the possible causes of effects. As soon as they see that, they will know, then they won't choose to. But I said of effect, wait, certainty. I add that with certainty. I said that's for the whole thing. Too much so. You can't eat it again. You have to see. Boss, read. The first method is what? 
the first method is method of agreement. That is, if in the series of tests, wherever the suspected cause is present, the effect is also present. Very good. I have the mental image for you to look at, but you can see it in your test. Let me just use something that is really accessible to show you what J.S. Mills means when he talks about the method of agreement. In, in the other slides, you see they talk about common thread. I just don't put it here because it's not in the textbook and we don't want students feeling disadvantaged, okay? So what is not in the given textbook, it might be correct, but if other groups didn't see it or another student didn't see it, it's not fair to them when you ask them that in the exam. So we'll reference what is in the textbook or what is in the recorded when it comes to multiple choices, labels like that. But you should just know that method of agreement is also labeled as what? The common thread method. One thread that is running through is common to all of them. That's what. So it's the method of agreement. What agrees through through all of them. Okay. So so an example. We all go for a, 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 an event. Cyrus, myself, let me look for names. Uh, Cyrus, myself, Kala, my sister Kala, Hannah, Belinda, Irene. So we all go for that wedding reception. And then they serve us meal. Because there wasn't enough, they gave each one of us different meals. Maybe I, I did the yam palava sauce, someone did jollof rice and chicken, someone did a TZ. You know, so the meals are totally different for all the six of us. However, for every meal, they put a, a, a salad, vegetable with the cream in it, okay? A scoop of it by it. Amazingly, which we couldn't say anything because it's an executive wedding. So we feel that we are, will be bush if we say, oh, don't put salad into my TZ, for example. So everybody has that. Even though we had different combinations of meals, take note, ya, kojo, adjua, et cetera, the six of us all have different meals, yet there is something that is common, a common thread. There's something that agrees in all our meals, which is what? So I just said we, we added salad cream or vegetables with a spike of salad cream on it to everybody's meal. So that's what is common to all of us. Now, when we come home from the party, I'm just explaining method of agreement in a way that you can relate to it and don't have to do it technical thinking or mathematical observation figures on the screen. I'm just trying to do what happens in our everyday life to show you what J.S. Mill is saying. So we come home and then we are all at the hotel. In my room, I hear brrr, the toilet is flashing. That's my, my next room. That is Kojo's room. So let's use uh, Cyrus's room. Cyrus is visiting the loo three times daily, like paracetamol. I'm doing the same. Kala's room the same. We all meet at the corridor, going to the receptionist for extra tea room. <laughs> the one they gave us in our hotel rooms happened. So I meet her and say, me your phone. This one, you know, this one, my, my tummy. Right after the reception, room, that is happening. What will we all say is a possible cause of the running that we are all experiencing? Notice that the effect is running. It's the same for all of us. But the antecedent condition, we had different meals, yet with a common antecedent component which is what? The salad cream in our vegetable. What then will we say cause this? I want a gross answer. What cause the running? Salad cream, right? The salad cream. Excellent. The salad cream. That, is how you, that is what we will say. So we will all say that. that the salad cream. You owe me that here. Salad So by the method of agreement, why do we say agreement? That is what agrees. That is what runs through. That is the common thread running through the antecedent condition. And look at the effect. The effect too is common to all of us. The same running, running, running. That is all. So intuitively, even before going to the hospital, even before looking for first aid, we will say that it is the salad. By an inductive reason. Why do we say it's inductive? Because it may not be the salad. The salad may have nothing to do with it. It may even be the water. 
that we drank. But we haven't given attention to it. We are looking at what was common that we could also, maybe the water I drank mine, then he drank his later on when he was going to the room. So we didn't do it together, but it could be that. It could be the atmosphere, it could be the flight. We took a flight. I mean, when you travel from even Accra to some village somewhere for days for camp meeting or something, sometimes the change of water causes upset. It could be that. But if we were explaining it, this is what J.S. Mills is saying scientifically, what is immediately accessible to us is the one that runs through that we can tell the method of agreement. Okay, if you got that one, then the method of difference is the opposite. For the method of difference, we took the same meal. Nobody wants to go and do catch up over there. So we said we all want fufu and aponche and kakra. See that? So everybody, fufu goat meat, fufu goat meat, fufu goat meat. Come and see Kales blows. You can't, you can't believe that this, <laughs> this is that that is calmly and quietly. Fufu, no trap, missing, no trap. Dr. Miles, or the doctor is not to play to mention. We trap, no a minute, no we trap. So we are all eating. The only thing that is different, and that's why the method is called different, is that after we are all eating the fufu, Dr. Miles says, I'm a mere fancy you. Say, oh, mom. Salad can cry. That simply means you're not fancy. So please, when you finish with the fufu, can you give me a plate of salad on the side? <laughs> then everybody just eats what they had. Now we close from our reception and go into our hotel room. Kala is sleeping. Cyrus is sleeping. Hannah is sleeping peacefully. Belinda, Irene. I say, we are all sleeping, except Dr. Miles. And she's not up preparing a presentation. No, she's looking for extra tea. I'm explaining the method of difference. That's all I'm doing. Only her, her tea is finished. Why? If you came and you wanted to diagnose what could be the possible cause of the running she's having, you will blame the salad. This time by the method of what? What is different in the antecedent condition? Because we all had the same meal. But she took something extra, something different that the others didn't. So if, if you were a medical doctor and came to your consulting room, that's the first point of diagnosis. They will say, look, take this one. Check the salad that is it. If it is food poisoning, they will check that first if you are an investigator. Because that's the exception to the issue. It could be that she was poisoned from home. But you start from the salad. Why? Because you want to offer a scientific explanation. By the method of difference, you have a static point. I hope that that is also straightforward and clear. Then there's a third method, according to G.S. Mill, which is what? Concomitant. Oh, no, let's do the joint method of agreement and difference. That is just like joining the two. So you do the method of difference, but why we will call it a joint method of agreement and difference is that this time you will do a set of people agreeing and another set of people disagreeing, then you contrast the two. So if it's a joint method of agreement and difference, then an example would be all the ladies at the reception took uh, the salad cream on their rice dishes. They wanted to be all designer, you know, singles and married. So they wanted to show that they know how to use the fork and knife. They all did some rice meal and they all took salad, that's the ladies. Then the guys also wanted to show that they be, them be men. So they took fufu and goat meat. And when they took the fufu and goat meat, they didn't take any salad. See? So it means that all those who took the salad will run. They will get the effect. And all those who didn't take will not run. So it is a, it's a stronger method why you have a test for agreement wherever there was salad there was what running for, among the lead a collection of them she wherever there was no salad there was no running that is between the men now you contrast those with salad versus those without salad so you see that you have good reason to believe that the thing has something to do with it that's a joint method not single it's not individual it's now a collection of repeated effects wherever the the cause is for agreement, and then a repeated uh, instances of what no effect wherever the that antecedent condition is not. That's
That's what I use the ma males and females to show. A group of them agreeing, a group of them disagreeing. Then you contrast. That's the joint method of agreement and difference. Then on the screen, we have the concomitant variation. Concomitant means uh, in the same order. Think of it that way. So they are varying concomitantly. That method simply is where you have a suspected cause. You have some, some antecedent cause that you suspect. You intentionally increase that cause a little to see if the effect will also increase. In other words, if it will have a varying effect, increase or change. If it does, then you can now establish that, oh, then it is Nahim Tutsu. Okay, so for example, if you took in the salad, just maybe one spoon, the cream, I mean, eh? one spoon on your watch, and it made you run two, three times in the night. If you are not sure if that is the possible cause, you could now take a little, a little uh, scoop, you know, a big scoop of that cream. And then <laughs> if it turns out that you are not running only two, three times in the night, but six, six times the whole night, six times a day, six times after, it has increased. Then you say, hey, then it is a salad. Normally, those who have rashes or allergies, that is how it is detected. The doctors or the physician may not necessarily have to even give you medicine immediately. You add some snail or seafood at the reception, maybe octopus or some crustacean of a kind on your meal. You went out, you want to show that you, are, you be the man. The sister says, I want some seafood, some seafood. So you go to some place at this Ligon there, or that seafood. They bring it. It's vegetable, but it has some some stuff inside it. The sister enjoys it, you also try to enjoy it. Meanwhile, your delicacy would have been watching with really simple. You go and do seafood. Now when you come home, on your shoulder, you see some fight fightish, you know, rashes there, which is which has never been there. You haven't done anything to so you say, ah, what could be the cause of this? You go to the hospital, the doctor say, what did you take? You take in something. You say, oh, I don't remember nothing. My normal fried rice, I the fried rice, normal fried rice you eat at. No, 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 this one I ate it. I took a lady out. So Do you know what the components were? Oh, they said seafood. Oh, then you may be reacting to something. So for us to establish whether it is this, you let them order for the same meal. This time, let them give you an extra, see the point. Let them give you extra octopus or maybe an extra crab or something. Why something? The thing that we suspect could be the anti. So there's already a suspicion. This is concomitant variation that we are trying to explain. Let them add some extra dish to the pizza. Or let them put pork on it or something. For yesterday, they just put some too little to garnish. Now let them put more. When they come eat all, let's see. Then you eat it, and surprisingly, by morning, your whole body has that rash. Now we have established to a, a certain degree of what? Likelihood. Never a certainty, I've told you, because maybe this, this is some black power that they are using to do that. It, has, it might have nothing to do with the seed. <laughs> maybe you are just tired. Maybe a, there's a plant that is growing behind your house that is emitting certain fragrance that your body is reacting to. There can be a thousand and one reasons why you are having it. And so you can say now you have established with certainty that it is the seafood that is causing. But inductively speaking, you have good reason to believe that there has to be some connection between the seafood you ate and this one. Why? Because when you varied the antecedent condition, the effect also varied. That's why we call it concomitant variation. And on that note, I'm done with J.S. Mills's method. We taught it with experience and grace. The rest is for you to do your bit. And you pass it like, I mean, like this, and get your, you can get 49 over 50. Straight, 49 over 50. Now, now, what's it? What are you about 38? I 89. When you're in, go, baby. Well, so on the screen now, you can now have pictorial evidence or example of what I have said. Look at the method of agreement now. So they all have their different dishes, but there is a common effect. We go and check the antecedent and we see that there is. Cream here, cream here, cream here, cream here. Okay, there's fish, fish, but here there is no fish and fish. So it can be something that is a common thread running to know. 
here there is what else is common do i see i see fresh vegetables is there any other one no so what is really common throughout is what cream 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 leading to what running 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 by the method of agreement we will suspect the cream as the probable the likely cause of the effect i don't think there is any question now see what i put in the note down there one of you can read that for me it's very tiny but i want someone to read so that it sometimes it helps when your colleague reads it you hear it from your colleague so hannah i'm at the read for me is that say kumi is that kumi do you want to read it yes go ahead sir. a possible cause of fallacy associated with this is the fallacy of confusing the relation of causal connection very good you may want to think that because it runs through then it caused it but i've told you you may only be confusing a correlation for a causal connection it may just happen that they are happening at the same time that it is not because one is bringing about the other no they just happen at the same time that's the fallacy called the fallacy of what confusing a correlation the two things happening at the same time doesn't mean one caused the other whenever i am teaching a certain course at city campus uh, one of my level 300 courses there it was often scheduled around i think 1 30 or something so as soon as i end or sometimes just when i'm about to end i say so thank you class god willing we'll meet next week then you hear the call for prayer there's a mosque there so you hear the call for prayer you know my friend my muslim friends can do it better right uh, you know the, uh, you the, the person will call for them to pray so you hear the sound but it was almost like consistently every week because as soon as i end you know the lectures have a time that they have to end for the next lecture to come in so i'll, I'll be wrapping up and i say so god will in next week and here you know uh, i don't know what to say so i don't want to hazard it but then the call will come now, the, the two things happen at the same time doesn't mean that it is my ending the lecture that is causing the person to call for prayer it's a correlation the two happen at the same time they correlate should not mean that one caused the other so when you we say you are committing the fallacy of confusing a correlation for causal connection that fallacy can be committed when you are using the method of agreement to analyze the situation it could just happen that the cream and the running happen at the same time yet there might be nothing causally connected between the two of them so take note a fallacy that can be committed in your uh, uh, analysis of coordination by agreement that fallacy is what confusing correlation for causal connection very good the second one is the method of difference i showed you that look at what is happening they have the same combination of meals rice wache ice cream but person one takes mango in addition. Person two takes the rice, water, and ice cream and says, that's for him. The dessert should be for him. <laughs> now, when they're going, one is running. The other one is not running. I showed you Nancy at the party. When everybody ate their fufu and appointing kaka, she says, I'm a fancy woman who bring me salad as a side plate something. When they came and everybody too was sleeping, she too, she couldn't sleep. That's the difference. That's what is happening here. So then we have good reason by J.S. Mills's methods to suspect what the mango as the cause of what they ran. I've said that already, different. Then the joint method, like I told you, see what's happening on the screen, is you do the method of difference. Okay, but then now your antecedent condition should capture a group, a collection. So persons one to 10 should have people that after you did your diagnosis, whenever they, they all ate the mango and they all ran. So you persons one to 10 ate mango and they all ran. Their persons 11 to 20 did not eat mango. Okay, and they did not run. So they agree here and they agree here. And then between the two groups, they disagree. That's why it's a joint method of agreeing and differing. That is the method I have explained to you. It's a stronger way than just using the individual method. 
There comes concomitant variation. I showed you here. You add some extra mango because you suspect it already from say the method of agreement. You have already suspected the mango. Then the effect is what? Running plus. You have added. It means that the run when you took some extra mango, maybe the, the first day it was just one slice of mango after the meal, and you run. You want to check if it is that one that is causing it. So this time you said, give me five slices of the mango and bring it to my table. You eat all. When you go, you are running five times. It is telling you that there is a, a connection, a causal connection of a kind between the mango and the running. Then just so you are very sure, these things happen with the labs. Eh? I just don't want to sound all technical and scientific and all you know, chemistry or whatever. You would have been straightforward. That is what you do. How do they find out that it is COVID or how they find out that someone is pregnant and all that? It's, it's this logic that is used. Sometimes they even feed it to the rat and see the effect of the, on the rat. And then when whatever the rat has as an effect is imputed to human being. Why? Because you'll be amazed with all your two legs and your body and your biceps and triceps. <laughs> you are, you are, you can be equated to the rodent the rat <laughs> at the lab. Oh, who said? <laughs> you see, what can hurt the rat can hurt the human being because of our uh, physical combination. And so we don't know who son to go and use to test the efficacy of that rat. So we test it on the, on the rat. And if the rat dies, we think that then it's, chances are that the human being goes to that. That's by analogy to comparison of the two. I'm just showing you that these things are so practical. I just want to use examples that are not extremely scientific and technical to, to ward you off. You can still grasp the concept proper and then apply it where it matters. Okay, so here you, you go and you still want to strengthen your argument. So you reduce the mango rather. If you took one slice on day one, you could say, okay, now give me a, just, just a, a, a scoop, one tiny little scoop with a tablespoon. Let me see how it happens. And then when you go, you just get some drops of uh, uh, stomach ease there. Then you say, oh, then I think it has something to do with the mango. Those of you who, who react to coffee, for example, I'm one of them. I don't like it at all. Not I don't like, I like the coffee, but the effect it gives me. Uh, you'll be shocked. Even your exam, you may not be able to concentrate to write. But some to take it, my little sister, for example, takes it, and she's able to stay awake. She's the Bermuda Triangle people then. Mm -hmm. Science, math, stats, we are philosophers. <laughs> we don't like too much uh, Asia. So I would react very badly to the uh, coffee, but she would take it and she's an alert and all that. So the point is, you are able to tell by what? Varying concomitant. If you had a suspicion that I don't know, I feel some way, just like something is not right today. I'm not really enjoying it. I haven't seen them. It's as if I'm feeling sleepy, like I'm tired, like I'm drowsy. What did you take? I don't remember. But we all ate together. We all ate the same bread. Until we realized that I it's possibly the coffee. So when you want to be sure, before you sleep, and you take a heavy dose of it, maybe three uh, sachets. And then now you can tell. It is so vivid to you. And you say, mm -hmm, if I have a serious day, I, I will never go near this. Thing. Meanwhile, the other person is reacting. It's simply what? Concomitant vibration. All right, any questions? Then we start with our causal fallacy. We have just a few more slides to go. We have already seen one of the fallacies. So if, it's, if there are questions, you would want to kindly keep your hand up. If it's not your question, then respectfully put it down. So I'll take questions. There are eight hands. Okay. There are eight hands. So if, if you have a question, then you can keep it up. If it's not your question, please put it down so that I will address the questions and we'll move on. Simple instruction, friends. I want you to learn that. Simple instruction. Okay. Oh, all the seven are questions. Hey, Jennifer Isando, you have a question. Lady Jenny, is there a question? Sydney Asangali. Sydney as Angalisa. Is it is it a question? Um, yes, please. Yes, please. Jennifer, ask your question. Um, okay. Um, please, I wanted to ask for the cause that it's um it's unknown that we do not know. Um which Jennifer, of the speak up just a little on, bit more. Uh, um, please show um, just a little bit more. Uh -huh. The 
cause that we do not know about like maybe that's what caused it but we don't know that was what um caused it which of the terms will it fall under we, we don't have to <laughs> the thing is you you can never know what the actual cause is. that is what philosophers want us all to know the critical thinker wants us to know as for what really caused it you will see in your textbook a discussion on hume david hume and some other authors in the textbook telling you that some have questioned the supposed claim that something caused something they, they say how do you establish the reality of costs okay so we may never know what the real, look at the language, the real cause of something. You may never know it, but we can explain it scientifically, what is given to us to know. You don't know that people say, some people say that it is the devil who caused it. I didn't plan to do what I've, I've done. Or oh, the devil. <laughs> some say it's not, it's not a boy, he had a very bad upbringing, a starting point. That is what, he was groomed to where he grew up. His upbringing caused this. But others also came from such a home. They didn't end up the way he or she has ended. Some two came from a supposed good home. They ended like this person. So how do you establish what really David Hume and his friends in your test, they are philosophers. They tell you, when you're looking for the real causes of things, you're unable to establish it with certainty. That is the handicap we have as human beings. But what we can explain, in other words, what we are able to do something about is what we are doing. So you don't say, hey, na prigyo, na de prigyo, 20. <laughs> the preaching thing I told you the last time, uh, that the people will go and give offering, uh, the preacher will come and talk, uh, hoping that after saying all that, you say, the people will give more. Then the, the friends sitting there say, you are talking too much. Whether you preach or you don't preach, it's 20 persons will give. So na prigyo, you know. <laughs> You know, they preview 20. That same example for some people, whether they learn or they don't learn, they, they believe that what will be will be. So they, they do nothing about it. That question is problematic. So the empirical scientist says, we have to be able to make an attempt at explaining what the possible cause could be inductively so that we are able to at least mitigate it, mediate it. If it turns out that it wasn't the real cause, we haven't lost anything. Thank God that we found the real cause. But when we sit and say we are unable to establish what is really causing the failure, what is really causing the uh, relationship break, what is really causing COVID, what is really causing all the things I mentioned, the flooding in Accra, we say we don't know what is really causing it, so we will not do anything about it. Then we are worse off. So the attempt here, J.S. Mills's methods, are attempting to causally explain and being a good scientist, he or she makes room for the possibility that it might not be this. So the doctor may tell you that, let's try uh, this an allergy uh, drug and see, because I suspect the, the seafood. That's what the doctor will say. You will not say, take this and I tell you, nothing can block my medicine. You go home and you come and sometimes they tell you, I think the antibiotic is not working well. So I want to give you a higher level. Why? It is because when he was giving you the other one, he wasn't certain. Uncertainty is a virtue. Unit seven. So he will keep trying and giving you options and keep researching. Sometimes you say, I think at this stage, we really have to fly the man out. Otherwise, we, we will have a good heart to even operate on. We, we've tried our best. It's not worth it. So take him to friends with his wife. Why didn't it take you immediately? You came because the expectation was that, oh, the, the procedures we, we have here should work. But it can fail and it does fail. Okay, so that's what we are doing now. So those ones, what really cause it, we are only being unable to know it. Let alone give it a name. Why? I hope that helps. Let's take um, one more. I see Nana Abna Insia. Nana Abna Insia, is it a question? Yes, it is. Go ahead. I wanted to ask which of um, JS Mills' methods are the strongest? What do you think? Or effective? I what do you think? I would go for yeah, I would go for the joint method of agreement and difference. But it would depend on what we are investigating. You see that for certain, like if I took just a sample of your blood, it is enough to do what I'm doing. I can use just that sample of your blood to determine whether you have malaria or not, or you are pregnant or not. But if I want to check what what is causing 
the COVID, for example, I will have to test quite a number of people who have those symptoms. I can't just assume because of the nature of what I'm dealing with. And then I, sometimes if I want to tell whether the, the effect of COVID on people with black skin living in the temperate zone, excuse me, people with uh, black skin living in the tropical zone like Africa, the effect on them versus the effect of that same supposed uh, you know, virus on people in the temperate zone, you know, where there's snow and what have you. If I want to establish that connection, then I may have to use a joint method of agreement and different. So it should agree within the African folks and agree within the white uh, non-African folks. Okay, then I can now say, and between the two, it disagrees here and agrees there. And so I can now establish agreement within agreement with that, and then disagreement between the two, just like we did with all women who ate the salad had the effect. The men who didn't eat the salad didn't have the effect. So jointly, it agrees. Jointly, it agrees over there too. And then between the two agreements, it's a different. You see that that's a stronger way of checking than just using the method of agreement. Then at other time, it will help to use concomitant violation. So sincerely, you may not want to pick one over the other. But if I were to pick, the stronger will be the joint method. You see, concomitant variation would even want you to have already suspected the cause. You should have started the process, and then you are using that one to affirm what you already suspect. But the joint method looks stronger, if you ask. One more, then we'll finish up with the causal fallacy, please. Sister Abna, is it okay? Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you, too. Let's take a, I want a name that I haven't got. The idea is, there's no name here. I see 1098 2933. If you put your name, then I would call you because the others have spoken, at least. Okay, you are the one I'm calling, 1098 2933. That's what you put there. Go ahead. Oh, 1098 2933. All right. When, when, when you are able to, then you send your query. Okay, let's finish. Um, can I have Sydney, Sydney read for me, causal fallacies. I didn't say formal fallacies. I said causa, cause and effect Hello. fallacies. Yes, sir. Um, I actually have a question. Can I ask Go ahead. You? Um, so from what we learned about the JS Mills method of agreement, is there an inherent relationship between that and innovative induction? And what? Enumerative induction. Yes. Yes, enumerative induction is when you count several evidences, and then based on that, you draw a general conclusion. The general conclusion may be either statistical or law-like. But when you draw a general conclusion on the basis of those particular instances that corroborate your supposed hypothesis, then it becomes enumerative induction. So if after our method of agreement, we draw a conclusion that whenever ladies take in salad or whoever takes in salad cream will run, then it becomes an innovative induction. But we haven't drawn such a conclusion yet. Okay, okay. And, uh, thank you. Another one. Yes. Please, yes. Out to read. Please out to read. I'm coming. Is that one okay, uh, sir? Yeah, that's okay. Okay. That's okay. But then that's the I have one. another question. Can you? Combine both the uh, commutative, I say commutative, I mean, the, what's the name? Method of agreement. No, not the method of agreement. The, Concomitant the variation. Method the joint method, agreement yeah. And con yeah. Can you combine both of an experiment to see the results? Can we combine concomitant mass? variation with the joint method of agreement and difference? Is that the first thing? Sydney, I just want to know yes. what we can combine. Is it a joint method yes. with what? Concomitant variation? Yes, 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 please. Yes, please, yes, please. I think if you would do that, it will make it a stronger argument. It means that after your joint method, you already suspect the salad. Then now, to strengthen the degree of likelihood, you, you in, interestingly, yeah, add more of the salad to those who we're exhibiting the effect to see if it will even increase the effect more. Yes, so that even is a higher level of what establishing a certain degree of confirmation. Yes, you can do that. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Let's let's read. We can come to all the questions again. Okay, I'll take them. So let's read. A sister says she wants to read causal fallacies. Go. Oh. Hog, ego, doctor, hog. Okay. After this, after this, because of this, yeah. If you conclude that just because something happened, if you conclude that just because something happened just before another, then it caused it. See how proximate cause could fall easily into this trap. Yeah. Confusing cause with effect. So you see there the first fallacy. Let me just explain that. So the first fallacy is post hoc ego propter hoc. Okay, post hoc ego propter hoc. It happened after this. So it caused it. The woman came, as soon as I gave my little boy a spank at the bottom, boom, then I had go as a as a magic score. <laughs> then I play a magic score. Then I was holding my little boy. Was he said, no, oh, Michael, stop it. I gave him a spank. Bah! And as soon as I get the spank, bah! as I'm was ball entered the net, and we all shouted, go. So I'm going to conclude. Therefore, whenever Ghana is playing a match, <laughs> and cannot score, my, I'll give my little boy a spank. Sally, that's post hoc ego propter hoc. When she entered the room, then the light went on. So you see, oh, you have come to cause light. That's post hoc ego propter. And I'm saying that chances are that proximate cause, when you interpret cause as proximity, the one we studied, the interpretation of cause as what cause am, and you think of it in the proximate sense of it, you may only be committing post hoc ego propter. Very good. Is that the next one? And to the next one, please. What do you think? Isn't cause with effect. There is an established causal connection, but in your reasoning, you replace the supposed cause with the supposed. Ex yes. So this confusing one. Confusing correlation. Let me explain. So let me explain. So confusing cause with effect is this: it is the cause that brings about the effect, not vice versa. The cause leads to the effect. So if I have cholera, apologies, say eh? I have cholera. Then I will vomit and poo poo. Apologies, I want it to be very vivid so you understand. So it is when I have cholera, the cause will now lead to what? Poo pooing and vomiting. Now, if someone is speaking and says, Me, I don't want to get cholera, so I have stopped poo pooing and vomiting. I don't want to get cholera, so me, I have stopped the poo pooing and the vomiting. In other words, for the rest of his or her life, he's not going to poo or vomit. The person is confusing cause with effect in the way she's reasoning. You get cholera, then it leads to. So you get COVID, then it leads to sneezing and all the things that we claim comes with it. If I say because of COVID, I have stopped sneezing. <laughs> not that I've stopped sneezing so that I don't go and infect someone else. If you don't have any infection, your sneezing is not harmful. So if I say, I've stopped sneezing, I've, st I've stopped talking, I'm not talking, because if you go and talk right now, you, you will get COVID. Now, confusing the cause with effect. If the thing is there, then it generates those effects. If it is, if you have the effect, it doesn't lead you to the cause. Okay, I think that is clear. The third one is when you confuse the correlation for causal connection. I already explained that to you, that two things are happening at the same time doesn't mean one causes the other. They just happen at the same time. Whenever the watcher seller is pouring her dirty water into the drains, Aladdin Musa comes to pass by. Whenever she's pouring her dirty water in the drain, the man will come and pass by. The watcher seller may be very prompt because she knows that the people come from the box right after prayer to buy watch. So she clears up and then watches all the food. And then just when they close the prayer for the people to to come out of the box, she pours that little water out. They just happen at the same time. You can't say, therefore, it is the man's passing by that causes the waters and the woman's pouring of the water. That's confusing a correlation or a causal connection. We'll give you fallacies like that, that you should diagnose which causal error is being com committed. And I'm sure you can do that, sorry. Then there is ignoring a common underlying cause. Look at the name. 
that fallacy that ignores what could be underlying this. There could be an underlying cause, something that is common that you don't know. For example, when you say that um, all the people who got an A, look, so you are in a room, maybe a roommate, you, there are six of you in the room, then four roommates and yourselves, the other two, are all doing critical thinking. Then four, four of your mates get A. And it turns out that those who got the A also have laptops. So the others who got their B pluses say, ah, the thing is, B say when 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 you have laptop, go fig get an A in the world. So you are telling your your genius who are now in, you're telling them that there are roommates and four of them. They all had laptops, and so they got a look at how you are doing your diagnosis. So they got a in critical thinking. So you to go and buy a laptop. But if you also buy a laptop, you get an A. It could be that the four who had the laptop did something else that you people are not observing. They learned or they downloaded video. So if the brothers, the new team of people also go and buy a laptop and they polish the laptop nicely and pack it in their locket there. Don't think that because they're going to buy a laptop, A will come. You may be ignoring a common, something that is common and underlining. It is underneath. It's not visible. You don't see that part of it. A common underlining cost for that A that the, the people have. They all had laptops. Yes, that's what is visible. But what is underlining they are having it is that perhaps they all, because they have laptops, yes, they were able to download, they were able to work do what? Study, perhaps they are studying me, they don't sleep, or if they sleep because they wake up, they are attending lectures, they are copying this and assignment is open, they are doing it, and so on and so forth. Those ones you have left out, all you saw is the laptop. Others do have laptop, they have, even have three, latest Apple. They got Q. Q is not even on their thing. So how do you do your analysis that way? That's the point. Where there may be a correlation or connection, yes, but not necessarily the cause, necessary cause, since there could be further conditions or events responsible for the effect that you do not see yeah, underlying. See, there are all the people who marry at this church there, their marriages are nice. I, I also go and marry at that church. You just go and do the ceremony there. Is it not the same church that someone has been at that church to, the, to end their life? That is if it is true. So it is not enough to, to see what seemingly is connecting all those antecedent conditions that led to that effect. No, there could be other underlying factors. So when you commit that kind of fallacy, where you are reasoning just based on the causal connection, you, see, you can say that you are ignoring the common underlying cause. Then there is genetic fallacy. When you accept or reject a view because of its antecedent, because of where it was sourced from, because of who caused them, where it came from, you see that. We say it is a fallacy. It is also a causal fallacy. Accept it because it, this is a China product. It's no good. When you say that you are committing a genetic fallacy, there could be a China product that is good, very good, durable, maybe. Okay, then sometimes you say this one is Italian shoe. Just because it's Italian doesn't make it good. Okay, you have to show us what about Italian that is good. What about Kumasi made shoes? That is good. This is Ghana Kinte correct bar. With a Ghana Kinte bar. What if, if, it's, if it's a one that came from what? Some back door. If it came from a back door set of people, then it will, it will not be good. You see that. So you, we want you to get the difference. But note that they are all causal fallacy. Then 34. Examples of causal fallacy. All the things I've said, I'm, I'm just giving you examples. That will make the point. Someone read it for me, please. Confusing Examples of causal fallacies. Confusing cause with effect. I noticed that people infected with COVID-19 sneeze and cough a lot. So I'm not going to cough or sneeze because I don't want to catch the COVID-19 infection. Okay. Thank you very much, my lady. So the two are self-explanatory. And my gentleman and lady, I, I just gave you instances. These are all there. 
all these things I've said it, my lecture and then the time that the, the, the clock strikes 12 o'clock or that the time that there's a call for prayer. One doesn't call the other, it's just a, a correlation. Look at the post hoc ego papa, proctor hoc. These are all real life situations I'm, I'm referencing. I gave the baby a spank and I someone's call. And so now I want to make that a rule of thumb, not necessarily. Then this one, they ignoring the comma, I've said all that. I'm going to get a laptop so that me to get time. If you get a laptop and you worship it, it is sitting on your bed, covered. You don't download. Then someone who doesn't even have the laptop, but makes an effort at going online and reading us and when he gets someone's phone or something, will do better. <laughs> so he's not just going to buy the laptop. And there goes the genetic fallacy. This one came from so and so place, therefore we should just like it because it came from so and so. It's problematic. It's a genetic fallacy. It's a fallacy because it's just saying because of its cause, we should accept it. But that is not a good grounds for it. The cause might be wrong. Okay, I'm so done. Padam. Now we take your question. Let's end the lecture recording. I said the lecture, the interaction. You still have the recorded lecture there. The dose. So this will be extra work for you. Yes. I'm just ending the, the recording, then I'll take your question. Mommy, yeah, ask your question. 